Big Finish Audio, The Paternoster Gang, Truth and Bone. Don't do bone, kids. Bone yeah. Bad. Unless you're a hooker, in which case, make sure you charge extra. And there's... <laughs> that'll, that'll knock the... Uh, this is obviously made for kids. Nope. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I make sure it's not marked for kids. Well, no, that's not what I was saying. I was just saying that, like, if, the, if they were coming by, well, this has got, you know, ponies on the screen. It must be made for kids. And then you, you listen to ten seconds of it, and suddenly prostitution is brought up. It's going to... <laughs> it's going to go, oh, no, um, yeah. Yeah, see, <laughs> dear, dear YouTube... Just because there's cute pictures on the screen does not mean it's made for kids. Yes, and that's why you don't mark it as made for kids. <laughs> that's and why nothing we make is comments. made for kids. <laughs> we... Yeah. Because we have a tendency to do all sorts of crazy things. We go into very weird territory on this stream. Yeah, yeah. you should see our Skype messages. <laughs> You don't want to see our Skype messages. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Especially some of the pictures we post. Pictures you post. <laughs> you two post. <laughs> we, like I said, we post. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a, a toss-up between who's worse, me or Maydrock. Uh, can somebody give me a refresh on what this episode is about? This is the one where um, the Centaurans have come back for uh, uh, Strax and... Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> for the Centaurans. Yeah. And so uh, it, it's a team-up between the Paternoster Gang and the Bloomberry Bunch. Okay, now I remember. So it's, it's really more a duo at this point. <laughs> yeah, because they... they they lost their um, their Silurian. But at the end, they decide to go find her. I was trying to get away from you. You two are annoying. I'm tired of all this lovey-dovey stuff. Can't you just leave me alone in my misery? <laughs> we'll help you find someone. Oh, God, not again. What do you mean again? Don't <laughs> ask. You just don't ask. What, which does make me wonder what the uh, Silurian Tinder would have been like. Oh, <laughs> dear God. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, date or eat? Date or eat? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like that piece of tail. We don't it's have good because that's good because it comes off and it regrows. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> terrible, <clears throat> terrible joke. <laughs> Santa. Ah. And now there are more of them, so it's it's. <laughs> Although now there's also Santa Ho. Was it Santa Ho? Yeah, that was yeah. the other one. There's the two chants, Sontar Ha and Sontar Ho. <laughs> I, I think that's what um, Tom calls uh, Strax in bed. I mean, not Strax, um, Stone in bed. Was it Stone? Stark? I, don't I forget know. his name. <laughs> the other, the other, the other one. <laughs> the Bloomberry, the Bloomberry Sontaran. Yeah. Uh. Stone. Yeah. So, um, lesson learned. Um, don't, don't kidnap Ginny. Yeah. That's because yeah. you do not want to piss off Astra. Yeah. Although yeah. that comment about she's got a sharp tongue, and I don't mean her sarcasm. I'm just <laughs> like. Kinky. <laughs> <laughs> Considering they're lesbians. I'm sure she knows all about that sharp tongue. 
uh, and not in a venomous way. You know, venom glands in the in the tongue. That's that's the, that's the ones with st suckers on them, right? <laughs> I mean, it depends on where exactly the venom gland is, because I doubt the venom gland is literally in the tongue. It's probably more like a Jacobson organ issue where you either put the uh, impart the venom onto the um, from the sac onto the tip of the tongue before emitting it. Or there's a venom gland near the salivary glands inside the mouth and it goes through a tube in the tongue and depending on which one that is i'm sure there are ways for them to disengage that de uh, depending especially since it takes time for them to just don't frighten to her it. <laughs> yeah so so <laughs> while you're doing while she's down there just don't startle her and you should be good <laughs> and i don't uh, jacobson organ is a sensory organ it's, it's it is it, that's but... not a not a uh it, it it is a sensory organ, but it I'm talking about used in a reverse way. Whereas you stick your tongue out and the um, odor molecules stick to the tongue, and you pull it back, and the organ picks up on them. Whereas this, it's kind of the opposite, <laughs> where you it, it dr oh, okay. deposits them on the tip of the tongue, and it shoots out and okay. scratches. So kind of a reverse Jacobson organ deal. And we are the kind of nerds who sit there and analyze the anatomy of fictional creatures. Yep, and Star Trek. And There's the check. Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, we'll analyze all of it. Yes, we are a educational science channel. <laughs> sure we are. <laughs> Although that does make me wonder about the Centaurans. Like... Do they still have those bits if they are a clone species? Uh, I mean, and they don't actually utilize, and not only are they a clone species, but they also don't e get rid of uh, waste products the same way normal humanoids do. They have a plug outlet. So they don't eat, and they don't defecate, and they don't urinate. So Probic do vent. they even have those bits? Would they be vestigial? Would they still be usable? Or... Oh, dear God. Does uh, he just use his potato head? No, no, I just thought of something horrible. No, 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 that was the last segment. Oh, funny. No, um, so, uh, Stone's his name, right? Yeah, Stone. Stone and, uh, whoever the, uh, guy's name was. They're, Dark. uh, yeah, they're, oh, Tom. Tom, yeah. They're about to, they, they go into the room, you know, for some, for some nice lovemaking. Stone takes off his pants. You see nothing there. Ty reaches over to a bag and says, huh, shall we use this one tonight? <laughs> and just puts <laughs> on a strap on dildo. <laughs> I don't know if they had those back then. Okay, sorry. A wooden strapped on dildo. No, I'm not saying they wouldn't have had glass ones. Because I think uh, dildos were invented around that time. Yeah, it's a funny reason why they were invented. As a means of getting rid of female hysteria. Yep. Because doctors' hands were getting tired. <laughs> Hysteria is a funny thing. There, there were steam-powered dildos. Because... The doctor, because in order to, uh, you, you could actually get a prescription to go to a doctor and get female linked. <laughs> oh, the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you have to pay a hooker for that. <clears throat> so. 
So um, yeah, but that's just how I'm imagining it. Those did exist, but I don't think strap-ons existed. Yeah, well, you know, alien race are smart enough. They probably figured it out, made their own. Maybe. Or just uh, no, just oh, use one of like a. Since since centaurs are called potato head, just like detachable. Oh dear God. <laughs> I yeah, just want just one of the suction cups, just just suction right there. <laughs> Remember, kids, educational channel. We are still less educational than true facts, and that's saying something. That's which, very true. Which, which my nephew loves that channel. I don't know if he should be watching it. But Zay he's still... Frank? Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's actually pretty educational. I, I like it. It is. It is. And it's funny as hell, but I don't know if it's really child-friendly. But he still loves it. I'd say no. <laughs> <laughs> True facts about the Centauran. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear God. Now, now I kind of want to... Work on my Morgan Freeman voice and just you just write that out and then do a do a pair. Let let's open up a, a Google Docs and we'll make a script for the true facts about the Centauri. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do that as one of our uh, channel things. Leave a comment <laughs> below if you think we should do that. Uh. A wildlife documentary on um the bedroom happening at the mating at the, <laughs> the mating processes of the centaurin <laughs> we don't have time for the for these breeding activities <laughs> poor strax i think he was just jealous <laughs> We're, we're we're happily hugging. It's like I'm going to hug you now. It's like it's fine. It's like I don't have time for these breeding activities. I think my Strax, do you want to hug too? <laughs> no, yeah. I think my favorite line from Strax in this episode was uh, "No." Makes me feel happy. We shall I'm... never talk about this. Yes, that whole scene where it's like, like, worse, it makes me feel happy. Oh. Oh. I think I understand what this happy feeling you're talking about is. Let's go save our people, and we'll never talk about this happiness issue again. <laughs> I would you know not put I... here. <laughs> <laughs> There's something I realized that I like about these clones. In, I want to say, like, 90% of any show that has, like, clones or something like that, they're pretty much the same. And I don't mean, like, physically. I mean, like, mentally. They, like, say the same thing. But with these clones, it seems like they still have, like, individuality. Kind of like one of Jeffrey Combs's many Star Trek characters. Probably. Oh, wait, you... Yeah. He's a clone, but he is who he is. Like, it's all the same. It's less like there's a bunch of him and more like there's one of him, but he's always there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like uh, they just... Oh. He's dead. It, oh my gosh, maybe that's what Kenny is. Oh you killed Kenny, you bastard! <laughs> Kenny's back the next day, episode. Maybe he's a... Yeah, there's... Which, 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 which brings up an interesting question. Would you rather be surrounded by chickens or have a chicken follow you for the rest of your life? <laughs> surrounded by chickens until those chickens die. Or... One or one chicken that follows you forever. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it depends because I, uh, um, 
I almost said Mulan, not Mulan. Moana had one that she kind of, I, I kind of think she wishes would live forever. Yeah, it's just like, just like you're constantly surrounded by about, you're, you're, you're surrounded by eight or ten chickens, but those chickens are only there until they die. Well, it depends. Do I get to kill them and eat them? They, uh... Because then I'll be surrounded by chickens for about a month. You actually, you have to do it. Because, like, okay. it's, it's, in, it's inta they're intangible chickens to anybody else. They can see them, we can see them, hear them, but they cannot touch the chickens. Except you. You can touch the chickens. And so... That's okay, as long as they don't peck at me. They don't. They just follow you around constantly. Okay, cool. Unlimited food supply for about a month. <laughs> okay, so so question about the one chicken that that follows me. I I'm guessing it's like the same thing. Everybody can see it, but they can't touch it. I'm gonna go with that for now, but it could be made more interesting by maybe people can see that one. Like that's you know that one. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Well, they can. Everybody can see both versions. They just can't interact with it. So if somebody tries to come up and kill the chicken, kill one of your chickens, it it doesn't work. But they can see it, they can hear it, they can, you know, feed it corn, and that's fine. Uh, okay, but, so but... question. If I'm able to kill it, can I give the dead body to somebody to cook for me? I'm going to go with yes. Once it's dead, it's dead. It's It, it, okay. it loses its magical but properties I'm, once it dies. Wait. But I am totally going with the having being surrounded by a pack of chickens that will terrorize people for me, <laughs> and I can kill one at a time whenever I'm hungry and give it to somebody else to cook for me. Totally cool with that situation. Well, Why? they don't terrorize anybody; they just sort of right. walk with you. <laughs> and then what? when you when you when you what? when you, when you get some place, they just... one I can train them to terrorize. <laughs> because they can't touch them, and they could just be running around haunting And two, whenever I get hungry, I snap one of their necks and make them eat it. So, it is, I don't think it's out there. I'm usually up in the sky, so I'm very comfortable. This is Damn, this is a long ass. Uh flyby. <laughs> I think it's a cargo or something. Maybe not. It, no, it the, was a different sound when it My I I would choose like the forever chicken, but my only problem is there's no way in hell I'd get away to bring a chicken to work. Well nobody can stop it. Nobody you you, you can't stop it. They can't stop it. You should you say okay you throw it away and it comes back to you. They try and grab it, it just doesn't... There's nothing that you can, can do about it. It won't mess with anything, right? No, it, 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 it just... It acts like a... It acts like it's in the middle of a barnyard. It's just sort of... It'll peck at the ground and just sort of walk around. Well, I mean... I this. A no nothing else can hurt them, right? Yeah, nothing so else can hurt them. So, can't, like get tripped up by they can't trip people or anything yeah, like that no, they're, they're intangible to everybody else they're just sort of there okay i am totally cool with this <laughs> okay the army of ch ghost chickens <laughs> so i will traumatize the fuck out of people so army of ghost chickens go so i'm wondering um why Chase that bastard! So what I'm wondering is, is this. So the chicken is not tangible, but can I take the eggs that it lays and sell them? It doesn't lay eggs. It's just... God it, damn it. It just it just exists. It, it's it's a, the it, whole... Okay, no, dude. You are surrounded by cocks, okay? <laughs> not that you're surrounded by cocks. Damn it, Infinite Ch Forever Chicken was an eggs was my whole plan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you are forever followed around by a giant cock. <laughs> uh, I'll name it Chance. 
<laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's a deep cut. If you if you got that joke, you've been watching our channel too long. <laughs> oh dear God. Yes, it'll be a big black chance. <laughs> Well, they could also get it from the other way, but... Okay, so, so, if, if it's living forever, does that mean it's your last chance? <laughs> ha ha, and, uh, there, and here's, uh, Doc's robot voice. You, you see, it just knew better than to go for it with Dr. Dr. Man. That's the thing. It was waiting for the end of the world. And, but remember, kids, when all else fails, pour acid on them. <laughs> because acid solves everything. Just don't pour acid on your friends. Well, I mean, technic te technically speaking here, technically speaking, if you pour acid on your friends, technically they're no longer your friends. <laughs> it depends on how forgiving they are. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on what's left of them. <laughs> yeah, but also how forgiving they are. Because if you, you could spill a little acid on somebody. It also depends on what kind of acid it is. True. Uh, you know, if, you, if it's just vinegar, oh, that's smelly. That's annoying. Why'd you do that? Well, unless you pour it on their hair, because that's supposed to be really good to get rid of dandruff and to make your hair shiny. Huh? Now I wonder what is the pH level of vinegar. It's a weak acid. It depends on how concentrated it is, but. And no. why the is it always apple cider vinegar that everything like? Why does it have to be apple cider vinegar to make your hair shiny? Why is it apple cider vinegar gets cat pee out of smell, uh, cat pee smell out of fabric? I think what they're going for is apple cider vinegar smells better than regular vinegar. So I think that's yeah, most or There might be something in it that's different, but I, I, I suspect it's that apple cider vinegar smells better. <laughs> yeah, there's red wine vinegar. They both smell bad. Also, fun fact: if you leave a if you leave a peanut butter sandwich in your locker for an entire school year, it smells like vinegar. Interesting. I learned this first year in high school because I actually had a locker that year, and I ruined one of my favorite books that way because Ooh. I there was a little sandwich in there, and I had an entire library of books in my locker. That I'd lent out and stuff because we had like reading hour and stuff. So I'd bring a couple to share off so that people would have something to read. Anyways. And to indoctrinate them into your, <laughs> into your fandoms. <laughs> it was mostly Animorphs. Yeah. Uh, animals. I mean, Animorphs was the best back in the day. It turned dark. I didn't care. I, I stopped reading after a while because I got into more adult books. No, no. I like, mean, it, naughty. I mean, like, uh, well, one of them was naughty. It was very weird and it got a lot more furry than I expected it would. But, um, I mean, freaky furry. But, <laughs> let's not talk about that. Yes, um, <laughs> so, about the pattern history game. Yeah. I think, I think we basically, I think we ran out of things to talk about when we got to the chickens, the chicken yeah. argument. Um, oh, let me see. I'll still leave it in because that's funny and it might be entertaining. It's like, we're... This is very transformative. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Although, I mean, technically, wouldn't Jenny be considered a furry? At least uh, a scaly. Yeah. Scalies are still considered, but 
anybody who is a fan of any anthropomorphized yeah animal. don't tell them that dude even if you're a tmnt fan and technically you don't have to be a freaky furry because anybody who is a fan of any anthropomorphized th um animal is a furry so if you are a fan of ducktales darkwing duck rescue rangers any basically any 1990s cartoon from disney you're a furry the mighty ducks <laughs> yes the mighty ducks <laughs> Is not the live action with the Neely West device. <laughs> That's still that is still the most bizarre transition. Actually, even Mighty Max, because Mighty Max had a giant talking fowl. Just yeah, that was that real the Mighty Ducks, <laughs> the yeah. animated TV show, not the movies, yeah. the animated TV show. If you haven't seen the animated TV show. Just, just, just go watch the opening theme song. I'm sure it's on YouTube. <laughs> and if you and, know what and, the Mighty Ducks and, is, you've seen the Mighty Ducks, and then you you, you watch the Mighty Ducks animated. Uh, and if you have Disney Plus, it is on there, and I suggest you go watch it because one, nostalgia will kick your ass, and two, it actually is surprisingly addictive. I watched the, like three the, the animated episodes. Show? I <laughs> it is it is what it is it is a, it is a it is very product much a product of its time <laughs> it is a it is, it... Mean, mighty ducks street sharks um <laughs> extreme dinosaurs the 1990s were just riddled with anthropomorphized animal superheroes yeah it's it's <laughs> it's one of those things yeah if you if you like if you like anthropomorphized heroes you know like you know animal heroes and, and whatnot go go just search up the 90s cartoons and 90s and early 2000s cartoons it's just a smorgasbord i mean you got the cowboys of cowboys of moo mesa oh god <laughs> i actually remember liking that but i don't but... i don't remember anything about them i just remember seeing them on toonami when I was babysitting back in junior high. You just activated memories I had no idea existed. <laughs> right? <laughs> the Cowboys I, of movies. I, I, back in junior high and high school, I babysat, and they had cable. And so while the kids were asleep, I would just sit there watching television until the parents came home. And... I remember Cowboys of Moo Mesa and the Americanized Sailor Moon, which just was so <laughs> different from the Sailor Moon I knew because I grew Never. up anime mm. uh, with an anime family. So I knew the dubbed ver uh, the subbed version, not the dubbed version. And I'm like, wait a sec, why are they why are they cousins? I thought they were cousins. <laughs> I know, right? It's like they're cousins. Yeah. They're since when did they move to Alabama? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, and you can actually find a lot. What I found is, like, surprisingly, if you go into some of these, like, free, like, legit free apps, not just, you know. Like Pluto TV. Yeah, Pluto and Tubi and that sort of thing. Yeah, you can find some of the '90s t '90s cartoons on there. Um, Sonic think, the Hedgehog. Yeah, I think that was that's on. Some, I think that one's on. Oh, I know. Tubi, I think, had Bump in the Night. Oh, I remember that. Wasn't that early two thousands? It might have been. It was. It was that late '90s, early two thousands. It was that sort of era, I think. Yeah and anything uh, from late 80s to early 2000s that like decade and a half was just the birth of the furry <laughs> well, it's, all, it's also happened. just just some weird stuff that they came up with yeah <laughs> okay well um considering we just went through um we tried to get we, we we got back on track and then immediately jumped off track 
Oh, oh, uh, another reference. They they uh, dragged into it um, the source of Sherlock Holmes' drug addiction, that 7% solution. Oh, yeah. From uh, the classics. She used a 7% solution for her uh, bone tincture. Yeah. <laughs> and, have to see to that Conan Doyle. <laughs> yes. The tar and fears nothing. And apparently, apparently, Strax is addicted to the Penny Dreadfolds. <laughs> Strax is <laughs> Strax. Yes. Strax is one of those horror buffs. Yeah. I, well, bet, I bet you in modern day, he would be all for like. Dude, I've seen it. I've seen it too. I've seen the original it. I've seen all thirty Nightmare on Elm Streets. I've seen uh, all fifty Friday the Thirteenth. Well, Penny Dreadful is more true crime than I thought horror. it was. Um, no, horror. Pe Penny Dreadfuls is. Um, I think it's talked about. It's basically talking about murders, which to a certain extent is horror, but it's also. Um, it has, it's it sort has, of a bit of a crime thing. Um, ah, so, it so has a little he'd, bit he'd of be more. He in modern times he'd be sat in front of the television watching Investigation Discovery like twenty four seven. Yes. Uh, and yeah. Somebody has to draw that a picture of Strax sitting in front of the television with uh, a bowl of popcorn and the Investigation Discovery like channel on. I mean, Penny Dreadful has uh, sometimes a little supernatural in there. Yeah. At least uh, the Penny Dreadful <laughs> show, a show I've been watching. Yeah. Because I thought Penny Dreadfuls were more along the lines of, like, what Lovecraft did, uh, were put in, and, like, Poe and stuff like that. It's a little bit of a mix. Yeah, what I'm looking at on the Wikipedia article, it's, it's um, Penny Dreadfuls were cheap, popular serial literature produced during the 19th century in the United Kingdom. The pejorative term is roughly interchangeable with Penny Horrible, Penny Awful, and Penny Blood. The term typically referred to a story published in weekly parts of 8 to 16 pages, each costing one penny. The subject matter of these stories was typically sensational, focusing on the exploits of detectives, criminals, or supernatural entities. So that is part of it. But uh, uh, uh. I think they started out as detectives and criminal criminal stuff, like talking about... Mm. That uh, first published in the 1830s, Penny Dreadfuls featured characters such as Sweeney Todd, Dick Turpin, and Varney the Vampire. The Garden described Penny Dreadfuls as Britain's first taste of mass produced popular culture for the young. And see, and see, when Strax reads things like that or anything similar, he probably thinks they're true stories. <laughs> But yes, I imagine. And now I'm thinking I haven't seen any of the newer seasons of it, but you know, um, Legends of Tomorrow, the one yeah. starring Brandon Routh. Well, there was um, an episode where they were deal they went back in time and they were dealing with vampires, and one of the dudes, the pyro guy, he was um, <clears throat> he was a huge vampire fan and he's like into the real vampire lore you know the classics and so they were talk. somebody made some sort of twilight mention uh, comments he's like real vampires don't sparkle you no know, no they do they do <laughs> i'm just picturing like strax with the vampire thing it's like sparkle real vampires don't sparkle what are you talking about <laughs> no 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 see vampires actually do sparkle for the brief second before they catch on fire. No, that's not sparkling. That's embering. Eh, yeah, embering, sparkling. There's a difference. And trust me, I accidentally just spilled a bunch of glitter in my room. I know the difference. Oh, dear oh, God. God. Uh, my, yeah. my condolences. My, <laughs> my uh, glitter, I have a little shaker of, I have a, actually, it's a pretty big shaker of glitter for my um, resin and stuff. And the lid popped off and just like, psh. and so, yeah, I know the difference between sparkle and embering. Speaking of glitter, 
Glitter will make you want to imprint. <laughs> I want, see, I want At, to make. Glitter is the herpy of the art, uh, herpes of the art world. No, no, no. See, I want to make my very own special glitter to send to my enemies. It'll be glitter, but each tiny piece of glitter will be in the shape of a tiny dick. That would be confetti. No, it'll be like tiny that you can barely see it. No, you know what you do? You take a shaker of glitter and you mix it with a shaky shaker of itching powder and powdered poison oak oh dear god satan calm and down you shake it together and you put it into an envelope with the just an just an envelope kind of like they sent anthrax some things back in the day and you send it to your enemies with no like Return address and make sure you're wearing gloves, obviously, because you don't want that shit on your hands. So there is no DNA evidence or anything. And you get a stamp from another county. It's like when you're on holiday, you get a book of stamps. And you wait a few months to a year before you send it. And you send it to somebody you really hate. Okay, so I think we've 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 run this story out. Yeah, I can't um, think of anything. Okay, well then I will go ahead and But keep in mind, this is not a spoiler, but the events of this season are very pertinent for next season. Okay. <laughs>